What would a win do for you on Sunday? Uh, help us finish with the winning record. End the season on a high note. Um, for me personally, it would, I mean, it's another opportunity to play. I uh, definitely value those, value all the starts and reps. And uh, outside of that, you know, those are kind of the main things that come to mind. A lot of talk about people wanting to finish with that winning record as a team. But for you personally, as a, as a starting quarterback, would that mean something to say you went four and three winning record? Yeah. Yeah. I think anytime you can put a win uh, in the win column for the team and for, you know, for quarterbacks. Uh, you know, wins wins are definitely a uh, matter for quarterback stats and all that. So I would say that's an important one. I think just in general, um, having some pride in what you put on the field and the tape you put out there and making sure it's always highest quality. What does it mean to you to have Spags come up to you after the game, the Jones come up to you after the game, or dap you up a little bit? Does that make you feel like? I mean, yeah, it, it felt good. Uh, or like, I. I don't know, you lose, and so you're just pissed that you lost. But, yeah, it's appreciated uh, in hindsight, and, you know, I'll keep those conversations private. But, you know, it's it's good to get compliments from people that know, that really study football. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to get some love from fans or something like that, but somebody that really studies and has been in football for a long time, uh, it meant a lot, but... You know, I, I think it was also, I was just pissed we lost. How aware are you of some of the milestones and accolades your teammates are, go, are close to going into the final game? Not very, uh, at least at this point. Um, you know, I, like I said, I just take a lot of pride in, in what I put on tape, what we put on tape as a team. And, uh, you know, I think for someone like myself, that's, that's your resume. Um, and so I'm going to take a lot of, a lot of pride and a lot of effort to make sure that I'm always putting out good tape and always at my best, even if it's, you know, maybe, you know, we don't have a shot at the playoffs or anything like that, but having some personal pride. How much extra incentive is it that it's the Battle of Ohio is against the Browns? Um, I mean, I think just regardless, you want to win um, against divisional opponents and stuff like that. And, and obviously they, you know, we, we wish we were in their shoes. Uh, they're they're going into the playoffs. We are not. So I think outside of that, it's it's just I maybe, but not for me personally. It's just I just want to study really hard, finish the season strong with the win, and play well. Hmm. I think in college a decent amount. Um, maybe in high school. I don't even know if they spy people in high school. I didn't really. That's it's a little. Uh, high, higher level probably, but uh, yeah, I've been spied. I uh, I've always scrambled pretty well, and it's always been part of my game. Zach was talking earlier, you know, Jake, that Jamar T and TB. One of the things that maybe people overlook is how hard they work at their craft, how hard they study. Do you see that? Have you been exposed to that as a teammate? Uh, yeah, I think it 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 really starts with. I think Troy Walters does a great job with that room, and doesn't doesn't really give him a choice. Not that he he really has to, uh, you know, force him or anything like that. But I think he he sets a pretty high standard for the room. You know, he's played in the NFL for a long time, and does a great job with those guys. And uh, I think TB is kind of an underrated leader in the locker room. Been here for a while. You know, with each one of those guys joining the team, his touches went down, and it never. And he kind of set the tone that it was not. This was not a, you know, I got to get mine type of receiver room. And uh, I think that's an underrated part of the room in general. And then with Jamar and T, uh, you know, I, I think ever since I've been here, they've been pros, pros, and they know what they're doing. Uh, I value their feedback on the sideline. I think sometimes you can have a receiver that just says, you know, I know Jamar says he's always open, but his feedback on the sideline is 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 valued and can you can actually take into account because – there's multiple times when Joe was playing, he would say something. And then you, I would always kind of circle back in the films, like, all right, was that accurate? And for the most part, it was. And so I think anytime you have that, um, it's valuable. With any thought on what your contract situation is going to look like next year? I think you're in a unique situation where because you've come in the league, 
agree with this under pressure of accounts and kind of won't be able to get free agency in the pool? I mean, how much have you thought about kind of that aspect of how all that shakes out? Not a ton. Like I said, I got a lot of pride in, in being very prepared for every game I, I get an opportunity to play in. Um, even when I was on practice squad, I took a lot of pride in showing up to every game, knowing the game plan really well, trying to be as helpful as possible. Um, and so that's kind of my focus right now. And at the end of the day, like I mean, I, I, I pay my agent, so that's, that's kind of his job and for him to give advice on stuff like that. But I, I've, I've been in the NFL a long time, and I haven't had a lot of starts, so these are all very valuable to me and mean a lot, and that's kind of my focus. And outside of that, it's... You know, hopefully my agent knows what's going on. At what point do you maybe sit, is there a point in the offseason where you sit and kind of look back at what this year was like for you? How far how over, how away from the team you I think once this game's over um, and you kind of get into, you know, like I, you have to get into reflect mode. And it, it, it's even like that if you didn't play a lot. I mean, it's usually kind of a time you get some very valuable feedback from coaches. Um, and I've always tried to seek that out if I if I value the coach's opinion. Um, even when I was just on practice squad, just like, hey, what are what are some things you think I could improve on? And you know, taking those into account, and first of all, getting a feel for like, are they kind of making stuff up? Because I've had two, you know, four pra four practice reps a, a day, and they don't really remember. Um, but I've gotten some valuable feedback uh, after game or after seasons, and, and applied that to off season. I think that's part of the reason I am where I am now. Um, but you, you have to be like that. So once the game's over, you kind of – like I'll, I'll write down my thoughts and, and have some notes on the season and just some general themes. Um, and obviously those are probably a little bit more insightful now because I have more reps to, to judge myself off of. I think that's been the hardest thing in the past for me is you get through a whole season on practice squad and you're judging yourself off of, you know, even towards the end of the season it's – 15 degrees out and you're getting four reps a day and it's like, all right, not many quarterbacks play well in that situation. And so it's just harder to know, like, what what do I need to improve at? So you kind of guess, but I think that's one main takeaway I'll have from the season is I've had a lot of reps and so I have a lot to work with as far as what do I need to get better at? And, you know, even though this season went much better for me personally than, than my past seasons, I'm still going to have the same high level of standard of of my off seasons and getting the most out of them, and so I think that becomes easier to do uh, with more reps. Is there going into the off season? Is there or at all a difference of if this team were to finish a one six in the AFC North as opposed to one and five? Yeah, I think just anytime you go out there, you want to win, and you know I, I've I've seen I've been on teams where you know maybe you're not getting everybody's best effort in this situation. Um, or seen teams where that's definitely the case, and I don't think that's the case here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just the fact that beginning of this week, Jamar says, "No, I'm playing," and everybody's like, "Here we go! Like, let's lock in. Let's let's finish this thing right." We've been battling. There's been some ups and downs. We've dealt with a lot of adversity as a team, and let's just finish this thing positive. And you know, when we all in the locker room after the game on Sunday and, and hopefully we've won, then, you know, it's like, all right, at least we got out on a high note. We didn't accomplish going to the playoffs, but at least we got out on a high note. And, and I think these are kind of the games, too, where, like, you you remember, uh, you know, like, I'm going to remember that Ted Kara showed up today and was dialed and super intense, just like this game meant everything in the world. I may not remember all the good and bad plays Ted has, but I'll remember, like, how he acted when we're out of it. And, and I think... You know, you want to be remembered well in the locker room, and because uh, I think people remember more so than how you know how you played. If you played well or didn't play well, they remember you know what was your level of intensity and were you a pro? You obviously, I assume, want to play. Once you get a taste of starting in the NFL, you want to play. But how do you balance that with wanting to stay in this environment, which I would assume you clearly like? How is there a balance there for you personally? Uh, I think for me, it's it's once the season's over, um, I'm just going to focus on all right. What do I need to do to get better? And kind of outside of that, whatever happens, happens. You know, I think I don't know much about my contract situation, but I know I think at this point, I'm kind of it's outside of my control. So I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm just going to focus on getting better. And uh, I think there's a lot of positives uh, to build on with this with the experience that I've had. 
And there's some, some things I, I need to get better at. And so focusing on those things I need to get better at, continuing to improve and trying to be the best player I can. And outside of that, I don't, I don't really have a ton of control or, or anything like that. And this experience, whether whatever my role is next year, I'll be a better quarterback because of it. Penix? I thought you said Pettis. Uh, great. I mean, he's he's fun to watch. They're uh, they're really good. They're fun to watch on offense. I mean, just you know, I know they're no Ohio State, but you know, it's uh, <laughs> they are they're good, and uh, I'm excited for them. It's, it's pretty cool for the university. Uh, I, I, so far, no. So far, I'm still dealing with Joseph Asai. <laughs> and uh, and they lost, so I don't. It's a pretty easy one. Worried at the end? Were you worried at the end watching? I'm not gonna lie, I was asleep at the end. I was uh, asleep at halftime. I do not sleep very well after games, so the that night is kind of when I catch up, and so I, I recorded it and watched it again. But they look good. It's it's exciting, exciting for the university. I'm excited for them, and um, you know I, I think. Part of me just refuses to ever be some bitter alum that talks about it. it's not the same as when I was there. And so whoever the current quarterback is for Washington, they're the greatest of all time. And, you know, the current team is the greatest team of all time. And I think that's kind of the way you got to operate. Don't be a bitter alum. People talk about, players talk about all the time the speed of the game is the biggest adjustment. You know, preseason one speed, regular season, postseason, whatever. Is there I think a lot of scout team reps uh, were really the most valuable. I didn't have a ton of preseason reps the first, whatever, three years. Um, so I kind of had to go off scout team. And scout team is extremely difficult because most of the time there's not supposed to be anyone open and they're going full speed and they're expected to win. And so you're kind of playing, you know, it's, it's definitely an uphill battle at quarterback. And so for me it was just, always keeping track of like my completions and, and decision making in those situations and getting the most out of everything moving pretty quickly there. Um, and then really once, like when I took over halfway through the Ravens game, it was, it was kind of nice where you're, you're running plays and people are supposed to be open. And so really at that point it's, and you got good receivers. And so uh, at that point it's, all right, here's the play we have called start to feel out what the defense is playing and here's where the ball's supposed to go and that guy's got to win. And that's, you know, I'm doing my job if I get the ball to where it's supposed to go and it's the receiver's job to win. Learned anything about yourself over the last six weeks? Um, I don't know. I, mean, I, haven't, I haven't really had a crazy reflection moment on that, but I don't know, maybe I will after the season. <laughs>